man that stands and sing and praise. Glad to be here tonight, hope you are too. Let's sing it out to the Lord tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this blessed day. Thank you for each one that's here and listening and all that are, that are watching online too. And pray that you would bless each and every one. And we bind all the wicked things coming against us and all that that would cause hindrance. We bind and rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. And pray and loose the spirits of truth, love, power, and a sound mind. Be with us tonight, Lord, in all that we do. We thank you for this uh, lessons and pray that you would continue to bless that each one might be strengthened and gain knowledge, wisdom, understanding from all that we do to here tonight. Be with us now and bless us in Jesus' most precious name for his sake. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's sing another song unto the Lord tonight and praise his name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Years I spent vanity and pride, hearing not my Lord was crucified, knowing not it was for me he died on Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to 
tonight and glad to be here and glad to do these things and sing unto the Lord and make praises unto him lift his name on high and look forward to this uh, last in the series of Philippians and uh, praise the Lord for all that we've learnt so far and pray that you'll learn something more uh, this evening uh, singing another song this is the day that the Lord hath made we will rejoice and be glad in it feel free to clap along This is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. Oh, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So not just rejoicing, but also being glad at the same time. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. Where did I put my thingy? There it is. Hallelujah. 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 While we're singing about hallelujah, sing our theme song. Seek ye first the kingdom 
sing and shout and dance or whatever it is you do unto the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise his name most high. Okay, Philippians. Philippians chapter 4. Get my Bible the right way around. Usually helps. Unless you're reading a Tanakh. So I'm going to get that later. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 9. We've gone through a lot. So a lot of encouragement, Philippians. A lot of, um, a lot of encouragement from Paul to the Philippians. A lot of encouragement we can get today as well uh, from the same passage of Scripture, same chapters that uh, was written so many years ago, but still very effective for us today. Very informative and very pertinent and very um, just right to the point of what we're going through in these days. And in this last part of it, uh, we're really going to see um, these things and what God 
can do. So let's go to the Lord and let's pray and ask the Lord's blessings on his word tonight. Gracious Heavenly Father, our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, thanking you for this time tonight. Lord, thank you for the study of Philippians and pray that you bless as we look into it tonight, Lord, and just that each thing would be done for your own and glory. I pray for all those that are watching here and those that are watching online, listening online, wherever they may be, Lord, that you would bless in every aspect, that um, we'd all be glad to have been in the house of the Lord today. And, and just thank you for the worship. Thank you for this time. And uh, in all things, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Be with us now and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, verse 9. Verse 9, it says, Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly. That now at the last your care of me had flourished again, where and ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of a want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to hunger, both to abound and suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So right here, Paul's continuing with his discourse. I mean, if you remember last week, we talked about um, thinking on the things that are positive, thinking on the, the good things, the pure things, the just things. These things are of good report. Thinking on the positives, not dwelling on the negative, but thinking on the positive stuff and all this. And, and if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. And uh, now he goes on to say, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. So he's saying, be, be, copy what he's been doing. Remember, in the last part, he talked about being followers, and he, he mentions this as well, to be followers of him as he is of Christ, and to be an example. And that's what we're looking for, is people that are an example. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> people that are an example of Jesus. So if we're going to follow someone, we need to know that they're following the right direction. That is important. <clears throat> if you're walking with a bunch of people, some people just walk along and they don't know where they're going. And then all of a sudden people think, oh, wow, well, we're, we're lost. I said, well, why didn't you say Well, we were following the leader. We thought the leader knew. So a lot of people wander along just following someone blindly, not checking themselves, checking their own maps, checking where they are to see if they are. They just kind of follow along. Right? We can't do that in the Christian life. We can't just blindly follow along somebody that we think knows the right way. We've got to check ourselves. So when Paul says, be you followers of me as I am of Christ, we've got to constantly measure up to those that we're following to say, are they following Christ in this way? Remember we talked about scope? To mark them, to scope them out. See if they match up to Jesus. Look at Jesus. How do we look at Jesus? Through his word. We find out about him through his word. We find out his characteristics. So then we know the characteristics of Jesus. So then when someone else comes along, we look at the, their characteristics. We look at the characteristics of Jesus and we say, can we see Jesus in this person? If so, then we can walk with them. It may be that we even follow them because they're following Christ. And we help them in this way. So the things you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. Crack on doing the things that you're supposed to do. And if you do that, he says, the God of peace shall be with you. Now, what does the Bible say about, um, the Bible says that great peace have they that do what? Love the law, love the law, thy law. Great peace have they which love thy law. And also goes on to say, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they that love thy law. So what does that mean? It means by keeping God's commandments, by doing the things that God has asked us to do and commanded us to do, told us to do, sent us, we have great peace. And the same thing as I could hear, these things that Paul has taught them, the things that Paul does, the things that Paul saying. He says, do these things, and if you do them, you'll have great peace. And it echoes that from the Old Testament. Great peace have they that love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Now he moves on to say, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly, and that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, 
wherewith ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. So remember we talked about when um, um, Epaphroditus um, had um, Epaphroditus had, um, had kind of filled in and he'd been sick because they wouldn't be able to do it. Well, now we see that they, they were able to now help and take care of Paul once again. And Paul said he wasn't, it wasn't, um, he's not, he doesn't want a gift. He said, not that I speak in respect of a want, for I've learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. So it didn't matter to Paul where he was at. He was content whether he had a lot or whether he had a little. He says, I know how, both how to be abased and how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. So he said, it doesn't matter where I am, where I am or what I'm doing, whatever state I'm in, whatever, where, you know, we've got abundance of food or we've got little food. He said, we can do this. And he says, in the context of this, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. So it doesn't matter what, where we're at, if we're rich or we're poor or whatever it is, we need to be content. Because we find people are not content. The poor are not content because they don't have enough money. And the rich are not content because they don't have more money. This always baffles me. How someone in the middle can be content with just enough. But yet someone that is rich and can afford all that plus is not content because they always want more money. Oftentimes the people that have are the ones that want the most. Some people, the, the people that don't have Learn to be content with what they don't have and what they do have, and they make, they make the most of it. And they're more content than those that can afford everything that their heart desires. Isn't that interesting? That they always want more. The rich always want more. The rich always want more. Always want more. Paul says we need to be content. Whatever we're at, wherever we are, we need to try and be content. You know, sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes in our situations and the people around us are so ungodly and, and we're, you know, you just, you want to just be gone from that scenario. And sometimes very difficult to be content in that. And we say, okay, Lord's timing. So God, I don't want to be here around all this wickedness. I don't want to, to do that. Sometimes the Lord says, I need you to be a light. And sometimes the Lord said, okay, I'll move you on. You know, you've done what you can. Because there's times where we have to shake the dust off of our feet and say, you know what, we've done all that we can, we need to move on. But God says, while, basically Paul is saying, while God's in charge, while God has put us somewhere, we need to be content where God has put us and say, that's it. God is going to do this. Why can we be content? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. When we put that in context, we really see the whole idea of what Paul is saying. You know, we tend to quote that verse just as a random on its own verse to help people out of a, a situation. But when we see about being contented with either what we have or what we don't have, it's, it doesn't matter where we're at, we can be content because I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I can be content. I can suffer need. I can abound, I can be hungry, and I can be full. I can do all those things. Why? Because Christ gives me the strength to do them. I can be the example I need to be, Paul says, because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. I can be an example. I can teach. I can, I can, I can uh, preach. We can do this. We can do that. Why? Because I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Whilst in God's service, God is going to strengthen us to do the things that we need. When we're weak and in want, we tend to get down. We tend to be down as, oh, if only I had this or like that. But then when we're in, in, in abundance, we tend to have this false, uh, false elevation of, look what we can do now. Forgetting that it's Christ that gives us strength. So Paul is saying, we've got to be content. We've got to be content in all things because of what Christ can do for us. He says, Notwithstanding, ye have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now, ye Philippians, know also 
that at the beginning of the gospel when I departed to Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. So again, he's making a point. This is like, these things that I needed, you sent. Not because I wanted them, but I wanted you to be blessed by it. In other words, Paul knew that God could supply the need. This is my God shall supply all your need. So he knows God is going to supply the need. However, whom God uses to supply that need is where it's at. God can use ravens to bring us bread. God can use a rock to bring forth water. There's amazing things that God can, God can do. However, when we are in the pipeline, God can bless us. And that fruit can abound to our account because we had part in that. You know, God can just have the ravens bring it to us. But God wants to see other people get the blessing of giving and receiving. And that's what Paul says. Is, no other church did these things, but he, they did. And he praises the Lord, not that he wanted everything that they had, but he wanted them to have fruit. In other words, he knew that God could supply it from any other church or any other source, or he could probably work and buy it himself. But he wanted them to be able to have a part in the ministry because the things that they, he needed, Paul needed, they supplied. Just like when we send money to missionaries. Now, God could use another church or God could send it from another source, but God uses churches and people to give that we also have fruit to our account. Why? So that people in those countries that we will never meet this side of heaven, we will never know this side of heaven, have heard the gospel and have gotten saved, and we have a part in that because it is fruit to our account because we gave money to that missionary. We helped or provided for needs. We helped give someone a Bible. We helped give somebody a tract. We helped somebody get some medicine or something like that. That was fruit to our account. So we always think of that. It's not because if someone gives to us, it's not because we should be desiring a gift or we give to someone else because we want them to have a gift. It's because we want to see fruit abounding to our account. Knowing that God is going to use us or God is going to use other people in his little chain. I've seen it go around and around and go from person to person to person to person to person to person. Why? You say, well, God couldn't, God, couldn't God have just sent it direct? Yes, he would have, but all those people would have missed out a blessing. All those people would have missed out on fruit. Every single person that goes through has some fruit that goes to their account. God wants to bless his children, amen? God wants you to be blessed. And so by being part of the prayer team, being part of giving out tracts, being part of sending money to missionaries, even if it's a penny or a hundred pounds, you have part. You give out of what you can give. And God says that you have part in that because you gave. So no matter what we give, if we're given what God has told us to give or what we do, what God has told us to do, and like Paul said, those things that you've learned, received and heard and seen in me, do them. Because then you'll have fruit that abounds to your account. He says, but I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you, an odor of sweet smelling, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Now, did they send him smelling salts? No. He didn't tell us what they sent. We don't know what they sent. But he says, it is a, a sweet smelling, an odor of sweet smelling, a sacrifice, except a well pleasing dog. What's that in reference to? Yeah, Old Testament sacrifices. That God would smell the sweet savor of these things. Not in the sense of what it smelled like, but it was in his nostrils a sweet savor. It smelled good, tasted good, these kind of things. So whatever they sent was well pleasing unto both Paul and unto the Lord. So we don't know that these letters weren't, it wasn't one whole 
latter day sent, these letters were sent at different times because Epaphroditus was with Paul and he sent him, he said, receive him, and now he's come back to Paul with gifts and now he's writing back again to the Philippians to say thank you. And he knows that God is going to bless them abundantly with that. Notice what he says. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. Thanks very much. All right. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. All your need. All your need. Not some of it. He doesn't say, oh my God shall supply all your wants. This is your need. So what you need, God is going to do that. God is going to provide for that need some way. We just have to be attentive to how he's going to provide for it. How he's going to do it. My God, again, we go back to remember what he said before, talk about my God. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let me ask you this, is God short of money? Does God lack for anything? No, absolutely not. So it's not, God is not going to supply our need according to the government's debt or wealth or our church's wealth. God is going to supply our needs based on his riches, not man-made riches. God can supply all these needs. You see, what is it to God to supply money or needs or anything like that? It's nothing. But if we're faithful and we're doing these things, these things will come. God shall supply all our need. However, if we take what God has supplied the need and we fritter it away, God is not um, bound God is not obligated to then resupply the need. He say, I need a hundred pounds to pay a bill. So God sends in a hundred pounds. Or God sends in a hundred and fifty. And you say, Oh well, I'll get an extra fifty pounds, I'll go and blow that, and then you end up blowing a hundred and some. And you say, Oh, I still need that bill. And you say, Well, what happened to the hundred and fifty pounds? Well, well, you know, I had that extra money, so we went and got, we went out and we got some nice food and we and we went here and we went there and we just, you know, it's just, but we still need that money for the bill. Well, God says, I gave you that. I gave you that money for the bill. Why didn't you do that? Why didn't you take care of it? And I gave you some extra that you could then pass on to someone else. Or Chances are there's another bill comes up and you needed that 50 pounds for that too. God was just supplying it one step ahead. So God is not obligated to supply your need when you fritter it away on other things. God expects us to be good stewards with our money and good stewards with what we have. He says, Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. Salute every saint. That's often hard to do. Salute every saint. He doesn't say salute everyone that you like. He says salute every saint. That's often hard to do because there's some people that just don't want to be around. God says, salute them. Paul says, salute every saint in Christ Jesus. So if someone's saved, you can greet them as a brother and sister in Christ. Don't necessarily have to fellowship with them. If they're walking, if they're walking uh, um, conversely to what the gospel teaches, then we can't fellowship them. He says, the brethren that are with me so greet you. All the saints salute you, chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. And he finishes it off by saying, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It was written to the Philippians from Rome by Epaphroditus. So he finishes off, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. I wonder if this is the last con- um, a communication that Paul had with the Philippians, these people. But what a communication! Something that they thought very highly of and something that it was kept 
and is now included in our Bible. And thank the Lord. How many other letters do you know about that were written from people to other people that are, that are still in, our, in, in possession thousands of years later? No. God promises to keep his word. To be strengthened by Christ in want or need, in abundance, whatever it is, be strengthened by Christ to be content in that place. To continue, to continue in the things that we need, to, to make sure we have fruit abounding to our account by giving as God would, would have us give and doing as we, God would have us do. To keep going, to keep pressing on. And the grace, the favor, the blessings of the Lord Jesus Christ will be with us. At every step we go, and God will supply all our needs. My God will supply all our needs because why? He has promised to. He has promised to. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you today, we thank you for this study. Lord, let your grace be upon us and help us in all that we do. Uh, Lord, be with us as we travel home and in all things, let your will be done in our lives. Thank you, Lord. Be with us now and bless each one that hears this in Jesus' name. Amen. You're dismissed.